G'day fans, and we're back talking about Star Trek Discovery. It's Terra Firma Part 2. Oh my goodness gracious me. Last week, we're in the Mirror Universe. This week, we're still in the Mirror Universe. Holy guacamole. Not much has changed between then and now, but uh, it's all very exciting stuff. With me, of course, is uh, good old MPS. MPS, what did you think of Terra Firma Part 2? Well, look, I think on reflection of the Mirror Universe, ah, my uh, it... it <laughs> It had a lot to, to live up to, and uh, we'll find out if it actually did. Very cool. I love the opening shot. You know, I think you start off in space, and you sort of zig your way through the decks. You get to see some robots. you got to see your robots. They're not doing anything, but at least we're seeing them, which is the most important thing. We get all the way down into the prison scene, and Paul Michael's having a bit of a hard day at the office. And uh, I thought, oh, okay, we're just picking up from where we left off. And, uh, and I guess whether you're a Mirror Universe fan or not, this is where we were going to be for a period of time. Uh, and it was all very intriguing. And I actually like the fact that all the cast got to do some really, really groovy stuff in this episode. Mm. They got in fight scenes and they got in torture scenes and they got scenes happening there and poor old Michael's getting beaten up and they even served tip-top bread. I couldn't believe that. She actually has a whole <laughs> piece of bread later. I go, that's a tip-top sun blessed. <laughs> is this in the mirror universe in the 32nd century or whatever it is? How gross is that? So uh, what do you think of all that, old son? Well, look, I thought it was interesting. There are a few things about it because I sort of broke this episode down into what Michael did, what Philip did, what Carl did. And Tilly and her grumpy face. I loved her grumpy face when she got a bit upset with, with no, don't do that. When she <laughs> and that was after Michael calls her a, a bitch, and yeah. she goes no, and then goes zap and take that, yeah, yeah, scurvy dog sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's there's a lot in there for just those four characters, but yeah, it was good to see the rest of the cast got a an equal sort of portion uh, in in sections where they really did show their true colours. In that universe yeah i found it interesting I, I you normally you watch these things and you sort of take notes as you go along and i thought oh you know what it's a lot of talking and well I'll just watch it and just see where this is going because you know it's the whole michael betrayal thing and you know and, and giorgio's trying desperately to try to fix the uh, the environment and you know bring peace to the, the to the world and of course as we discover later she can't no matter what she does she can't change the way the world is even if she's trying to, and she's like trying from the top of the food chain, trying to lead this charge, it's just not happening. And I found it was just kind of engaging just to watch. I mean, you could argue it was a little bit drawn out, the whole Michael thing, you know, they're putting in the, in the agonizer and this and that and all the rest of it. Um, but some people felt that when she had finally changed her mind and said, yep, I'm now going to join you, Georgia. I'm, you know, I'm on your side. And she starts knocking off her own people. You're thinking, oh, okay, that's a bit of a radical change. And of course, later on, we discovered that she's just gone about face once again, which I thought was pretty well played because you're thinking, all right, if you're starting to kill your own people, then clearly you have changed. But no, it was just a means to an end. Uh, and they turned the tables on Giorgio again. And I found it was just really interesting to sort of watch all the dynamics uh, occur. And uh, I actually quite liked it. So, um, but it still came to the fact it was still in the mirror universe. It's like, is it going to work for you? Yes or no. But it did carry over from last week. So it made sense. But of course, Giorgio really, really shown in this. She was like really like on the A game because you could see the torment in her eyes. You know, she's trying to say, look, I want to fix everything. You know, and actually like the fact you make references to the prime universe, you know, so like, I knew this captain, you know, Saru and all that, you know, the, the Kelpians and, and, the, and I thought that was really, a really, really good moment. Well, it's, it's been interesting to watch her and the Saru character yep. over the last two episodes, because she went from, from, you know, what would have normally been make him soup and we're all sort of yep. good, you know, the world is good to, no, no, you're going to go through uh, a change. You're going to go through... Um, Bahari. Yeah. Bahari. Yeah, Bahari. Yeah. Um, so you're going to go through it, but just let it happen because yeah. it'll be better. And then, yeah. you know, she allows him to grow, which means that she's putting through stuff that she's learned from the Prime Universe, which they never knew. They always thought, thought it was a bad thing and it turns out to be quite a good thing, which then helps her later on when she really does need it. Yeah. So it really is be, be nice to your sort of your co-workers and that sort yeah. of thing, because eventually they're going to come give you a hand. Um, her and Michael, it was interesting to see that she was trying to be compassionate towards her and trying yeah. to, to yeah. say, look, you don't need to lead with an iron fist and to be grumpy and kill people, you know, get them on your side and you'll get more from it sort of thing. And, you know, 
look, to, to me, I kind of saw that Michael wasn't going to be broken. I thought there was going to be some sort of game in there. And, mm. it, and you know, she, she held off for so long through the torture. You know, Tilly tortured her and then the other girl tortured her. And mm. it was like, you know, it must be Tuesday. Let's see who else can torture her sort yep. of thing. She took a beating in that mm. agonizer and a whole lot of other things. Um, but when she, she sort of looked like she'd come through, there was an element of, yeah, I have been broken, but an element of, I'm not done with this whole situation. You know, I, I'll do whatever I can to survive because I'm coming after you anyway. So it was, it was quite interesting. The two, the two of them really worked in that sort of instance. And then jumping ahead slightly, when, when um, Philippa comes back to, to reality and there's her and Michael and, and mm. Carl, and you go, you know, she, they say, oh, you've been gone like three seconds or whatever. And she goes, yeah, I've been gone minute. for months. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, you know, you've been gone for next to nothing, and she's freaking out because she doesn't know where she is. So, mm. it was. It's good to see the the dynamic acting that can occur with these guys. It was really sort of. It was good to see. It was. It was certainly uh, well developed from from previous episodes. Yeah, considering you're dealing with a universe where there's so much aggr- aggression and anger and just hatred, uh, and you're thinking, okay, the writers must have looked at it and said, okay, we have to deal with all this intense energy all the time. How can we make a story that comes out of this? And uh, and I agree with you. I think it worked really, really well. Um, uh, you were talking about earlier about how they, you would chow down on the Kelpians, and I love the line that um, uh, Giorgio says that oh, yeah, they're high in cholesterol. <laughs> so where did that come from? That was really, really funny. Um and yeah, it's it's kind of tricky because you know at face value you're thinking, oh, look, really nothing's happening. But then you delve deeper into it, and you go, you know what? There's a lot going on. And those moments with Saru, as I said, especially when he figured out that she wasn't from that universe, even though she was from that universe, but had been in the prime universe, and effectively, you know, depending on your point of view, had been corrupted. And um, yeah, it actually worked really, really well. And um, uh, and I actually did like the fact that, like, you know, from a technical point of view, just on a slightly different perspective, they have, like, a warp drive. Oh, my God, we're finally seeing warp drive in the Season 3. Oh, because they, they've got the lithium crystals. They're, they're okay. Warp 9, low, no less. Oy, that's what you call a fast discovery. I don't think even the warp, the discovery in the Prime Universe can go that quick, which is kind of cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting, too, that, uh, like, a lot of the actors, a lot of characters all get knocked off in the big fight scenes. It's like, oh, there's a regular going killed. I reckon the cast must have loved doing this they get to wear the new outfits you know and some of those outfits they were pretty cool looking too right yeah. and they got to do a lot of stuff a lot of fight scenes a lot of dying you know a lot of stabbing and shooting and all the rest of it far more than what they do in the prime counterparts where they're just standing on the bridge going yep got to do this and yep got to do that and press his button <laughs> completely con- different contrast and um but yeah the, bo- the bottom line is that yeah Giorgio discovered that yep no matter what she um try she can't change anything or everything in the my, my mirror universe except as we've acknowledged and as you said that the kelpians clearly have a better lifespan or better run of it after the fact once they've realized about the pahari thing so there is a slight change being put in place now and uh i don't think they'll ever go back to that universe again but if they did uh especially x many years later i'd be curious to see how things have changed so um very very cool and a lot of something yeah. just quickly a lot of people have picked up on the fact that the uh the the, the enemy the other group and they're mentioning oh there's klingons and there's romulans and the denobulans got mentioned and a few fans have picked up on that and said oh the dude's from enterprise how good's that so even they get a mention which is a uh, kind of groovy so yeah what do you reckon and it's good that they're coming back with with things from all over the place you know so you've got you know those little easter eggs you know when they go back through uh, the first time they see Federation ships, they see the Nog and all that sort of stuff. And you go, well, hang on, that's a, a nice little call back to DS9 and you've mm-hmm. got this to Enterprise and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's it's really sort of good how they're doing that subtly. It's not like yep. in your face yep. type of thing. Um, I thought it was interesting the way that Michael claimed that she killed all her co- co-conspirators. Yep. You know, she starts the throwing of the badges, you know. Yep. It was like yep. ninja stars across the sort of table. <laughs> and then she goes and drops a whole bunch on there and she goes, um, have you got them all? And then the other girl says, yeah. Oh, Detma. Yes. yeah. Detma goes, yeah. And she goes, not yet. Turns around and blasts her right through the head sort of things. Like, Jesus. Yeah, it goes to show, and I do actually like that, just how ruthless you can be in an environment where your, your end game means a lot of sacrifices along the way. Right. I mean, you think the ones you see off screen, she could have just walked up and said, Hey, can you, can I just have your badge for a little while and I'll give it back to you later? Whereas, you know, they're killing a Detmer on screen and 
you know, other characters like, oh, okay, that was actually very, very cool because you made you believe that it was actually everything was changing uh, um, legitimately. Um, a few people have picked up on the fact that Lorca still doesn't make an appearance in the show, even though he gets referenced, and it was kind of good that he didn't, actually. Uh, so people really like that because there's the mystery as to where he is. And there's a bit of a, con a continuity stuff up in this where uh, Giorgio says, oh, she killed Michael twice. Uh, and actually she didn't. And a lot of people say, hang on, she didn't kill Michael the first time in like the first season or whatever. So they go, you know what, let's just pretend that just it, the, the writers are just said, we'll just slip that in because it sounds good. But in actual fact, eh, it's not entirely true. So yeah, just, let's just go straight to the keeper on that one and not worry about it. But uh, if you're a hardcore fan of the show, you'll realize that uh, no, actually she didn't kill her the first time. So very cool. Um, but we get back to the, the the planet, and yes, as fans predicted last week, you know it is the Guardian of Forever, which is a beautiful link back to the original series. Even the voice, you know, I am the Guardian of Forever. That was really really cool. So we worked out who Carl is, and they even explained because a lot of fans did wonder. Hang on, the Guardian of Forever was in the Alpha Quadrant, and now we're on the Gamma Quadrant or wherever else. It was like, what's the deal with that? And he explains that yes, he had to bail out because of the temporal war and all sort of business. That was all great. And you're right. Imagine Giorgio waking up after one minute of being unconscious and going, hey, what's the deal with that? For, for months, she was stuck in the mirror universe. How would you be there for months and months? And then all of a sudden, you've just woken up back to where you were. God, that'd just do your head in. What do you reckon? Well, you know, it's like, you know, waking up inside a dream of a dream sort of thing. Yeah. You know, it would have had a completely, and then she wouldn't know who's who and what's real because, you know, in one universe, Michael's good, and in another universe, Michael's trying to kill her, so she's yeah. really not sure. But yeah, it was interesting to see, and and it was interesting that he said that Carl said that she was being sent back to be weighed, and, yep. you know, tested, not sort of um, to figure out what she was meant to do, but her course over this life yep. cycle. So it was really interesting to see. Yeah, um, yeah, he he played a very small role, I thought, in this, but a very poignant position you know to sort of say you know because last week it was sort of oh, i'm here and here's a door and blah 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 and now you can't walk through doors but here i am to show you what your options actually are yeah so we ended up back on uh, discovery uh and all the crew even jet has reappeared and uh and i like the fact that because jet is a character that only pops up once in a blue moon and even stamets said hey where have you been <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what the, the the audience has been thinking too which i thought was really really cool i thought it was cool because you get back into the room and you see all the crew just standing there and because we've just seen them in their master uh, mirror universe counterparts where they've been running around and fighting and dying and all the rest of it and now they're just standing there like they normally do and second like, you can imagine the actors go oh my god this is so boring <laughs> give them something to do now they get back to yeah. being the way they were so i reckon that was a really good transition from one uh, aspect of the story to the next aspect of the story which is kind of cool but yeah it was uh it was kind of groovy that georgia's there said you know what she's come from mirror universe back in the prime universe and doesn't want to go back and i thought that was actually kind of groovy so once upon a time she couldn't get back there quick enough and now that she's mm. been there has said no nah, I'm, I'm i'm done and dusted i, I want to stay put so uh i reckon that was um kind of cool so yeah which which really does show a big character development over the last three seasons you know, we saw her come in, coming in hot, trying to kill everyone and everything. And now I wouldn't say she's mellowed uh, per se, but she certainly has changed to the point where she doesn't want to kill everyone in sight. She acts like she wants to kill everyone. Yep. But I think she's gotten to the point where this might be the Michael that she wanted as the daughter. Yep. You know, and, and, and had she stayed in the mirror universe, not yep. trans transferred over, you know, that Michael would have been fine and she would have killed her in a heartbeat. But now she's got the the affection from the daughter that she always sort of wanted, I think. Yeah. yeah it is interesting. You sort of kill the, kill the daughter in one, one sense, then you wake up and the daughter's still there, but a completely different sort of personality, which is kind of groovy. Mm. Um, so we get to the very end. And I, I really like the bit at the, at the Guardian of Forever where they do the respective salutes. So, you know, she does live long mm. across when he, and, and Giorgio does the Terran thing. That was really, really well done. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could argue that at the final scene on the Discovery, where they're all having their last little moment. You know, so, oh, yeah, she did this and she was, she was, a, she was a hard ass and that. That was probably laying on, on a bit thick. Um, but we have sort of discussed in the show before, typically when a major character is going to go ta -da's, there's a big, long, drawn-out, you know, memorial scene. If you remember the uh, Next Generation episode, Skin of Evil, when Tasha Yard died, oh, they just dragged that out like you wouldn't believe. So um, uh, you, you could almost say it's, it's a, an idea of that for everybody to say their bit and have their, like, ching, 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 and all sort of bizarre. But anyway, she's gone now. So, um, and, and of course, a lot of people have picked up on the fact that when she, as in Georgia, goes into the Guardian forever, we don't see where she ends up. And we think that's been deliberately done. So the writers can now say, all right, where are we going to take the character? What are we going to do? And a lot of people have figured out that maybe 
this is where the Section 31 show that was like discussed a couple of years ago will come into play. And that now allows that to occur as to when it is set. And a few people are trying to work it out. Is it in the distant past? It is in the future. Is it like, you know, fitting into certain timeframes? when that's going to occur. But uh, that's why we, uh, a lot of fans have thought, yep, this is the uh, the opening to allow that uh, to occur. So what do you reckon? Well, yeah, I, I didn't mind the the moments when they were talking about Philippa. Uh, and I think it was Reno when she said, um, she had some good lines in, in this, as per usual. You know? As usual, yeah. I think, I think one of them she said, oh, she had no tact. And yeah. it was like, Oh, yeah, no, she didn't. But at the same time, she did. She was in it for herself to push buttons and to see how far she could get. Because when you think about it, at any point in time, she could have been put in the brig or gotten yep. rid of or dumped on a planet or anything, you know. But they kept her around because they needed some sort of rogue to to keep them on their toes and help them when they couldn't do it by the rules. Well, that's actually a good, good point because even we discussed in this show, it's like, why is she even there? You know, she's wandering around wearing the Admiral's uniform at one point and all that. But, you know, it, it was all part of the story. And, yeah, you, you now look back and go, yes, it was a, a loud, uh, designed to allow her character to evolve. And then when she gets sent back to where she came from, she realises, yes, she's actually changed quite significantly. And that was actually quite good. Um, any final thoughts on Terra Firma Part 2 before we give it a rating in Federation Logos, MPS? What have you got well, for us? I've got a couple of lines from uh, Reno, which one of them was, candy is practically an accessory. Uh, um, you were that. And then I think it was, uh, she said to, oh, I think it was against the doctor. She said, just say thank you or he'll unravel. <laughs> you know, it was just funny as. Yep. And I did yep. like the, the moment between um, the Admiral Saru and Booker, uh, yep. the hologram Admiral and that. It was yep. very good to sort of say, look, you know, how do, how do you know about this? What are you going to do? And he says, look, how about you keep me off the book sort of thing? Yep. That way, when you need to do a special mission i can go and do that i thought that was very well handled in an official capacity actually just on on that um they're now using emerald chain technology to sort of like you know do their bizzo whatever it is they're supposed to i got lost in the trek no babble on that part uh and some people are starting to think oh hang on well that come back to bite them in the ass so in other words if you connect into admiral uh, emerald chain thingy is, is that going to work in reverse and suddenly oh the emerald chain systems are going to now they're going to get into uh, discovery and sort of upset the apple cart somewhere along the line so that's definitely a bit of a watch this space moment but i also did like the fact that vance yeah he was still a bit suspicious as to what was going on you know he wasn't exactly saying oh it's all great and wonderful he's like oh yeah so we just yeah watch your p's and q's there son and uh, so, yeah, Saru's kind of been sort of put on edge a little bit, which I thought was kind of cool. But anyway, keep going. Look, I think I'm going to give it, oh, it, it's, I'm going up from what I had it at. I'm going to give it four stars Very because good. I thought it was a, a good episode. Uh, and it'd be one of those ones where I hate to say it, and Star Trek does it a lot, we'll have a, a good episode and we'll have a couple of oh, no. average no, you episodes. Think but positive. hopefully, you got to think positive. But hopefully we've got a couple more episodes till the end of the season and hopefully it keeps going up and up and gives us a big thrill for the end of season three. Yeah, very, very, very good stuff. For myself, uh, yeah, it's very funny. I mean, as I said last, last time, the Master, uh, Mirror Universe, I kept saying, sorry, Master, it's actually Mirror Universe, really isn't my cup of tea. But uh, this time around, it actually really did work. There was a lot of great character moments and character drama and a little bit of unexpected, oh, what's going to happen now type thing. And it was all worth it just to see the development of Giorgio and uh, to see how her perspective had changed from when she was last in the mirror universe uh, and what had happened into the prime universe. It, depending on your perspective, you could be a person who says, oh, they've corrupted her. They've actually made her soft, as Michael even says in, in the show. But, you know, it's all part of the thing of evolving and changing and actually discovering what's actually uh, uh, good about the world. Um, and of course, once we got back into the prime universe, which I uh, kind of threw me off because I thought, oh, that's actually happened sooner than I thought. All that worked really, really well. We'll get back to the crew, get back to the story, and things are really moving forward. So I thought, and with the link with the Guardian of Forever stuff was you know, really well done. It was a beautiful hark back to the original series. And I thought, yeah, well done, guys. They didn't just introduce a brand new thing. They went back to something that people can relate to. You know, that's, you know, you've got this brand new show that's linking back to the original show from 50-something years ago. I thought that was excellent. So for myself, I looked and I thought, you know what, overall... I was completely engaged from start to end. It worked for me, so I've decided to go for the full five uh, Federation logos. I Ooh. thought, yep, yeah, it worked for me. Time. I really couldn't find much in the way of faults. I and mean, there was points I was just watching and thinking, you know what, this is really working for you. I'm, I'm just totally engaged. I'm, I'm very curious to see what's going on. So uh, I know some fans are a little bit different about it, you know, if people have their opinions. 
But uh, now for myself, I thought, yeah, it worked really, really, really well, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyway, that could be the end of the mirror universe as far as we're concerned. It's gone. It's done. It's, it's out of the way. Giorgio's off to do six and 31 at some point. So be curious to see if she reappears in that. Who knows? But, you know, the Guardian of Forever, he knows everything. So there you go. He's like another version of Q when you sit and think about it. But anyway, we move on. So next week. We've got another episode of Star Trek Discovery. Oh, they just keep rolling on. That's what the ultimate Christmas gift is. More episodes. Oh, you can't have enough. That's the most important thing. So until then, as always, just keep on uh, trekking on. So see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>